Welcome. I'm super excited. I have Laura Bryna on the show. Laura Bryna has established herself as one of the hottest new stars in country and pop music with features in Southern Living, New York Times Magazine, The New Yorker, I'm sorry, New York Times, <laughs> the cover of r and and Billboard Magazine. Laura Bryna, welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> you bet, you bet. And, and, and uh, we have a little friend too. We have a little friend. This is the little one. Can you blow a kiss? Do I blow a kiss? Or no, I'll turn my back. Or upside down. There. There we go. A little kiss as we go down in my sleep. Yeah. As you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I wanted I wanted to actually uh, get started by asking you um, at what point as you're traversing this crazy music entertainment world uh at what point did you say okay i am all in i'm going to make this my career no matter what well i'm really blessed i have great parents that um just just said go live your dream go do what you want to do we we're behind you 100 percent. and they've done we're all a bunch of mixed marriages deaths divorces and all shenanigans so, you know, it's like you need salt and pepper shakers to explain how everybody got together and whatnot. But um, but my parents have been really great. They always told us they were so supportive. Go live your dream, whatever that may be. And I'm the one that chose to go into the crazy music industry. So, <laughs> so it's been a little interesting for my parents, to, needless to say, to say the least. But, um, you know, I think it really was. I know it sounds so strange, but at like... I guess when I could talk and I had my metal spoon in my hand and I'm there with my sisters in the basement singing songs and, you know, we're doing backup dancing and all this stuff and charging my parents 25 cents a show. I think they saw the show like four times a day. We had our jukebox downstairs listening to oldies, which, you know, that's why the oldies book goodies, they stand the test of time. I would have been so great in a poodle skirt had I been in that time. My dad always says, he was like, you know, Laura, he's like, you really were born at the wrong time. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, but so it really was that kind of moment. I, even if it was just touching my parents' hearts or making them smile or laugh or whatever it was, it was something that I thought, hmm, maybe I should think about this. And, you know, going through and doing the school plays and doing dance classes and um, hair props um, and, uh, and doing acting and dancing and singing and all different things you know I'm always somebody that I always am learning I think that's so key in this business is to learn and meet people and so I uh I don't know I just kind of knew like I get that bug I've never done drugs before but it's kind of one of those things that goes hi Laura you want me come get me no 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 and so I was like okay <laughs> but yet like you know and then there's times where it's like a good country song, you know, it like she'll break your heart, but then she'll build you right back up again. And, and then you're like, Oh, but maybe, Oh, ah, e. and like, there's times where you definitely have those moments. You're like, why am I doing this? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, uh. And like my poor parents heard the same story, like all over, all the time, all over, whatever. And then they're like, but Laura, you can. And it's like, you're like the little engine that could, you're like, I can do it. I think I can, I think I can. And, but, uh, you know, I, uh, I've been really blessed and really lucky. I've, you know, just kind of absorbed the whole thing and I've kind of been a sponge and I just love learning is really what it is. So that was a long and drawn out answer. Sorry, Bert. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, I like the fact that, that you kind of put everything, your, your, what do you call it? Your career experience under I love learning. That's a great attitude. And, and yeah. you're going through this journey and and sometimes it can be very frustrating and heartbreaking, as you mentioned. And and but it's kind of cool when you're looking at it from a pro, from a, the perspective of I love learning. Yeah. Well, you know, I, my dad, oh, my dad passed away in April this year. So it's been a little tough. It's been one of those challenging years from a rare blood cancer. But you know, I always have him thinking or over my shoulder in my ear saying, you know, Laura, he's like, I never wanted you to go through something horrible or, or be sad or be heartbroken, but you really can't sing about, you can't really sing about songs that have heartbreak or a blues song, which as you can see, I love the blues. 
um, or jazz tune or a sad country song without having gone through something. And that's when you really feel it. And so, Daddy, I definitely, uh, <laughs> we've had our moments, you know, <laughs> going through the tough times. Um, but I've uh, been really lucky. Uh, and I've had some great teachers too that have said, you know, especially one um, who has also passed away now from a kidney disease. But he said, you know, he's like, Laura, I never want you to say no to an opportunity. I always want you to say yes. Put on that pot of coffee, which I don't drink coffee because if you think I talk fast now, you think I'm going to talk really fast now, <laughs> I talk even worse. But um says you put on that pot of coffee and you stay up all night and you learn the part you learn the song whatever it may be and that's always you know I, I always say always learn you never and and always meet people you can sleep at another time you know right. there's always there's always someone to meet and network and know and and you never know who the little guy is going to turn out to be which is yep. so to me it's all about learning I uh there's I I don't know if you watch reality television but i was up for um um a part on a show on in reality tv and they wanted me to come in and be something that i'm not so to speak but um like they wanted me to come in late they wanted me to be like eh, i don't like this and i don't like that you know and it's just like you sit there and you're like but that's not what it is but the person who was the assistant who was actually the water went and got water for all the different actors is now the head of a production company a big production company so you just never know what who someone's going to turn out to be and always right. be nice and you know always give a hand helping hand too i think well, right no well, and i and, and back to the re the reality show part i think it was uh courageous i think it was uh uh, great to, to set that standard or those boundaries or whatever you want to call it and say, you know, that's not who I am. Right. Because reality show, if it gets picked up and it becomes a hit, then people really don't understand that reality shows aren't really reality. They're, they're, they, they may not be scripted as some other shows are, but, you know, people are playing parts and all of a sudden they're going to say, well, this Laura person is you know, she seems to be a high maintenance type person. And, and, you know, and all of a sudden, I don't know, it could damage, it could, it could damage more than it could help. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's different ways. Yeah, for sure. There's different ways to look at it. But it, it's like, you just never know what, who someone's going to turn out to be for sure. And so, you know, always be nice and always lend a helping hand and that kind of thing. But right yeah, you know, there was a little bit of nudity in it too. So it's kind of like, <laughs> You know, I don't need to put my dad in a, in a hospital again. So let's not do that. So anyway, moving on. <laughs> Sorry for <our> next question. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. But again, uh, not to, to gloss over the fact that you, here's a guy who, as you said, is the kind of acting like a PA. He's bringing food and he's, you know, he's trying to take care of the, the actors or the talent or whatever you want to call it. And then before you know it, he's a head of a giant production company right. and to your point we we all have to treat each other like we matter because we all matter exactly we do yeah and there there are people in hollywood that get a reputation of being hard to work with and you'll see that their star will fade a little bit quicker or you'll you'll hear less about them because you know, bottom line is, if you're a difficult person to get along with, you better be super incredibly talented <laughs> because we're all replaceable. Or, you know, everybody's sitting there talking about them. So, you know, yeah. what bubble is about? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, there's feathers flying. As, as, yeah, so you see something collide across, <laughs> across the um, camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. Where the fur flies, I guess. Yeah. All right. So, live, OK, so I want to. Uh, your first big hit, uh, they call it your breakout hit, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but your breakout hit was uh, Hometown Heroes. And, and this yes. was this was a, a colossal hit. Not only was it your breakout, but the military, I think it was the Air Force that National Guard. Yeah. National Guard. Thank you. Uh, the Which National Guard. Part of the Air Force, so. What's that? Which is a part of the Air Force. It is, but but uh, bottom line, National Guard picked it up. 
they made it like their song and they made and they wanted you to be the spokesperson that talk about this because that's got to be one of those unexpected i don't know what you call it unexpected surprises from just doing what you love to do and all of a sudden bam 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 right absolutely no you know and that's kind of where i use that whole like life is and your career or whatever is like a tree because it's like you have to be prepared for the next branch to come off you know you give it a little miracle grow and you never know what, what's going to sprout and to me it was just there we were doing a show in las vegas and um it was the big uh, opening of our releasing our first record trying to be me which i i love that i love the name of it because Geez, aren't we all still trying to figure out who we really are? Um, so I love that record because it has so many different uh, avenues of life and just different thing, challenges that we come across. And, and one of the songs on there was 640 Battlefield Drive, which there is a Battlefield Drive in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And, you know, there's been different wars fought there and whatnot, but um, in Nashville, but I, uh, I've always loved the military. I've had family members in the military and, you know, I wouldn't be here talking with you today if it wasn't for them being able to live in freedom, pursue our dreams. And I mean, these families give it, you know, and that's the one thing too, that a lot of people don't understand. It's not just the one person in the family that gives, it's the whole family that gives, you know, they all make sacrifices and it's 24 seven, 365 days a year and and so from that show uh there were some gentlemen there watching and to my knowledge they were like that's who we want to represent us in our advertising campaign and I was like okay I'm like just here I am little Laura from Mount Airy Maryland okay great I mean it was a really big responsibility and such a I mean such an honor and I have my flag here, which I flew with me, I flew in an F-16. My call sign is Lil Thunder. Mm -hmm. I pulled nine Gs. I didn't throw up. Um, went Mach 1, which I guess I can say now. Um, I think we flew over Mexico, but... <laughs> um, but yeah, I, you know, I love the military, everything they stand for. And, you know, that song debuted on Monday Night Football. It was really one of those cool pinch you moments, as I like right. to say. And I got to sing at the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers game and, and you know, was on, this, uh, was on the field with a veteran from every war that we had fought in, like Jessica Lynch was there. I mean, wow. World War II veteran, all the way. It was just really, really amazing. And, um, and of course, whenever I sing the national anthem, they'll have a plane fly over. I mean, it's really unbelievable. And I, I mean, I sang it, um, I, it, you really, get the esprit de corps and I and I've become very close um with so many of them and I I've gone to their children's graduations I've got one of the colonels who um who passed away several years ago um I went to his retirement ceremony I sang his funeral um and oh I I love this man um and I love his wife I continue our friendship and so I, I've really made some wonderful uh, relationships with the men and women in the Air National Guard. And, and I continue, I, I love my work with the military. I do lots with Folds of Honor and, and uh, Homes for Our Troops, uh, Wounded Warrior Project. I love to give back. And that was something that was important to my parents growing up is that we always, that we should always give back and help those less fortunate or spread the word of what these wonderful men and women are doing every day. And that's really what this was. It was a coming out party for the Air National Guard to let people know that they're everywhere, you just don't realize it. And, and they're not looking for a thank you, they're not looking for a handout, they're not looking for any of that. But it was my job to let them, let people know, you know what, these are heroes and they're everywhere. They're, you know, they're at hurricane relief, but yet they're over in Afghanistan right now. So it's just a whole bunch of heroes all around. And I just right. feel really lucky to be a part of it. Yeah, that's gotta be cool because again, it's. You weren't expecting it. it it's a, and it is a great song. Uh, this Thank idea of, of having hometown heroes, and you know, we we sometimes, I don't know, we we take for granted our hometown heroes. I mean, you know, there there is this. What's the word I'm looking for? There is this uh, thought that a hero is this 
you know, larger than life individual. And, and of course, a lot of Mar and, and, you, and you watch these movie, these Marvel movies, and those are cool. Uh, you know, but I think that we forget that a, a hometown hero is not only the, the men and women who serve our country, but it's also the moms and the dads that, you know, that raise their kids to be good citizens. And when I say good citizens, productive people that that know mm -hmm. how to you know, set a goal, reach a goal. They, they, they're 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 fulfilling their purpose. I think that's that's a hometown hero right there. And we forget that every day we have millions of good people doing the best that they can, and we just forget until <laughs> until you run into somebody who just does a bad job, whether you know, it's a clerk at a government facility or a server or, a, <laughs> you know, just just a run of the mill person who just hates their job and hates their life. And or maybe they're having a bad day. But, you know, you get somebody who does an incredibly poor job and it helps you to realize how fortunate we are to have people who love what they do and I do a good job. Absolutely. And I think you're so right when you talk about moms and dads doing that and raising responsible citizens and, and teachers and, and, you know, the, from, I mean, even I remember writing the liner notes in that record for trying to be me. And to me, I took, I think I took maybe a month and a half to write the liner wow. notes in that, um, in the jacket, because I wanted everybody to know that there is no me in Laura Bryna. There, there's a whole group of people, a whole team that goes behind, uh, you know, behind me and and around me. It's not behind me. We're all together. We're one team. I just happen to be the face, um, but I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for all of them. And I wanted to make sure that every person who brought me water, the bus driver, the guitar, uh, the guitar tech, everybody is responsible for making this record happen. And I, I always am appreciative of those who, who help and, and make this dream a success. Yes, absolutely. I think, again, you know, it's one of those things, I've seen it with my kids. Uh, so I'm blessed to have five kids. And, and, and you see, it, when I say I see it with my kids, they, when they hit those teenage years, those horrible, horrible teenage years, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know, and the, what's the age range uh well now they're my, my babies i have a set of twins who are 20 and then and then from there it goes from let's see 20 27 30 and 33 so. oh my god your house must have been so crazy i mean we're, we're five too but we're all like from all over the place but right. God, and that was nutty so yours must have been really nutty <laughs> It was. It was crazy. Now, I was fortunate to have two boys and three girls. I learned so much from my girls uh, about about how girls think. And Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> it, it was, what a thrill that was. It was like, oh, wow, that's why you guys do that. It was just. That's why, what was it, Venus and Mars, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's the clue in right there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let me ask you this. All right. So. Uh, well, you know, uh, you did, I, I don't know if I'm using the right term, but you kind of, for a while there, you were all in country and then you had, the, you, then you kind of did this crossover into pop music. Talk about that and, and how difficult or how easy that was. Sure. Yeah. You know, I love music in general and I love where we're at with music. I think it's really neat to see whether it's your computer, your iPod, your iPad, whatever, whatever you're listening to music on nowadays. Um, you know, nobody's listening to one style of music. Everybody's listening to all different kinds of things. And it was interesting. I was at um, a Jason Aldean concert this weekend, which uh, I've been very lucky. I got to perform with him and, and Tim McGraw and up in Boston, I think it was. And so just to see his show again, and right before he came on, he had a couple other acts come on, Hardy and Lainey Wilson and John Morgan, phenomenal. All of them were just fantastic. Sound guy was amazing. I'm like, yo, come join us. Anyway, um, but before Jason Aldean came on, um, they were talking about, they were playing, they had, he had a DJ that was playing, he was talking and then he was also playing all different styles of music and everybody in the audience knew it. 
like it was they would they would know the song from Usher then they would know this country song from Fancy Like and then they'd play like it was all over the place so you see that everybody's listening to all different kinds of music and then it, to me it's like we're all morphing we're all you know we've got influences if you didn't have influences where yet you know um so we're all listening to different styles of music and for me it was kind of like okay what does laura Bryan want to say next and um one of the members on our team was like hey you know what you should really talk to damon sharp he's a really great producer really cool does like the pop thing but you know knows knows your country stuff but yet could maybe bring a little edm which he's having a great doing a great job in uh the electric dance music my god he's djing he's doing everything. and the thing with damon too is what's amazing is that he's been an artist too he's a producer he's a musician he's done everything so he really understands what it's like to be you and so we were kind of just meeting with a lot of different people and damon and i just really clicked um he really got me and you know, he's like, I don't want to take the country out of you. He's like, I just want to challenge you. I want to push you and see how far does Laura, how long, how far can Laura go? Right. And so it kind of turned into this whole poppy dance thing with then this tinge of country that I bring. And so it's kind of been a different marrying of songs. So I don't know if it's um, contralectic. I don't know if that's contralectic music. I don't know how you want to say it. <laughs> I, I like that. Yes. But, um, like that. Sounds like a bunch of garble, but, um, but yeah, I mean, we have, knock on wood, we've been so great and so lucky. And um, I mean, with sweet revenge with stars are falling and now the way that it was, I mean, just absolutely incredible. I mean, top, so many top tens and like, you know, and top two and, you know, and just, uh, you know, sweet revenge is kind of like that kind of marrying of the country and you know it's like who doesn't want a little sweet revenge i mean don't we all <laughs> i mean it's a little sassy attitude and and with damon what was great too is he he's like you know laura with what you're saying next give me some examples of some artists that you'd like whether and whether it's a guitar riff you, you like this drum lick you like um this song this lyric whatever it may be he's like let's draw from that and i was like Okay. And it was such a great challenge. And so, you know, I gave him some Chris Stapleton. I gave him Grace Potter. I gave him Etta James, uh, you know, just with whether it's the lyric or it's the, um, uh, the guitar lick or just, you know, and I was like, look, I want something anthemic. I want, you know, in your face kind of sassy attitude. That was sweet revenge. And then you get into this stars are falling, which is it was recorded way before the pandemic and so was the video but it kind of became like a theme for the pandemic i mean so many first responders reached out to us and say we're saying thank you i watched your video i listened to your song when i come home from work and you know i mean you got first responders who are sitting there dealing with COVID every day and they just need something uplifting and something positive and to know that your song is a part of that and just had a maybe just an inkling of just to bring some positivity to their life. I mean, God, that's what music's all about. And that's what the yes. dream's all about. And, you know, and here we are with the way that it was and know that, know the way that it was, isn't necessarily about the pandemic, about God, why can't we have everything the way that it was? I mean, it's about a relationship and why can't we go back to the way that it was with things? But, you know, it is kind of a little pandemic-y in the sense that, you know, we're all saying, God, I just want to get a hug in person. I just want to have that human contact. I just want to see somebody in face to face without a mask on or that right. we can just be like, hi, I love you, um, you know, and just be humans again and, and be those responsible citizens that you're talking about and and uh, be there for one another. So but uh, so it's been really great. I mean, I think right now it's number three in Switzerland. It's we're starting to promote it here in the U.S. and uh, England, I think, was number nine and six in France. So it's been really great. It's it's fun. And uh, and yeah, we're kind of bringing back some country and kind of headed that way. And, uh, you know, because I got to really stick to my roots, too. So, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All right. So let me ask you this for us for us lay people uh, who don't understand the value of a producer. What does 
a producer like Damon Sharp bring to the table that, that, that you can't do? What does a producer do for you? You know, uh, to me, uh, Damon, what a producer does is really, I think as, as an artist, we're our worst critics. You're like, oh, I don't like that the way I, and uh, like all these different parts. And you're like, and then he's like, no, that makes me feel something. Like, you know, I think we get so hung up in today's world with everything has to be so right and so perfect, myself included. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of all that too, but they give you an outside look, looking in at what it is. And it really makes, he makes you look at it from a different angle. And, but Laura, this is what I, this is what it is, or this, and, you know, together it's a process where it's, you can't, creativity is such magic, you know, and when you create it and when it's right, man, is it right? And it feels so good. And you feel those, those butterflies, the hearts flying, the star, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I, I love Damon's perspective because he looks at it from an artist as well as well as a musician, as a, produ as a producer. So that's kind of, to me, I love that he's done everything. Right. So he understands where I'm at, but he can also see, he can also see the, the end result, which sometimes as artists, we're like, do you think that's okay? Do you think that's all right? Do you think they'll like it? <laughs> like, I mean, cause you know, I, I'm myself, I'm not saying all artists, but I'm, the queen of melodrama. So like, I just go, oh my God, are you sure? And it really is. It's like standing out in the middle of the street and you're like, okay, does her left boob hang too low? I mean, it's kind of like, you're just naked there and you're kind of like, do you think people are going to like it? I mean, it is. You're just right. putting yourself out there completely naked. Yeah. Well, it, it, again, music, like acting, like uh, writing a book or an article, you're right. You're putting yourself out there. Uh, some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. Right. Some people are going to say some nice things. Some people are going to say some bad things or mean things. Uh, but you're right. You're putting it, you're, you are putting yourself out there. It becomes a personal thing. Uh, but that is part of playing big. Okay, you know, yeah, the, exactly. That's part of the magic too. It's part of the magic. And, and, and you know, you figure that 80% of the world will hide their talents. They won't play big because they don't want to hear the criticism they don't have like-minded people supporting them and saying, go for it and go for it. Uh, you know, the, oh my gosh, what, what, um, I forgot her name now, but she, so um, Kathy, I believe is her first name. See if I get her last name, but so bottom line is she was the lady behind the Twilight series. Oh, right, right, right sure. Okay. And so uh, her sister was the one who twisted her arm. So she had written the, the, the first book. And everybody loved it. And, and she had no intention on sharing it, but only with the family. She had no, no intention because she didn't want to be criticized and she didn't feel secure. And so she had no intention in uh, even publishing the book. But her sister twisted her arm for like two years. She finally relented, published the book. It goes gang ba banger, what a gang busters. Gang, gang. <laughs> yeah, they, they make the movie, all this other stuff. And it changed her life. But sometimes you need somebody right. to push you and encourage you. Yeah, you know, yes, I agree. And, you know, I'm always somebody that can be scared of change, but change is good. And, I mean, sometimes we just want to sit in our comfy PJs and our slippers, you know. There you, go. Um, you know, you just want to, okay, now it's time to put on the jeans and zip them up. That's right. That's right. And pandemic's over. And you're like... <laughs> Shoot, I can't fit in them. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> well, you know what? I mean, it, it, what you said about change. Change is good. And we all, if, if you, again, want to play big, if you want to be fulfilled, if you want to have a life worth living, it is all about change. And you don't have to change as much as, um, you know, uh, Bruce Jenner. You don't have to do that. But, you know, change. Oh, God. <laughs> all right. But change is good. Change is good. <laughs> All right, dear God. But you know, I, the thing is, is with change, I mean, even though, I mean, like I get back to the branches that we were talking about. That's so something, the branches. Um, you know, I, 
with being in LA, you know, and, and not that it can't happen other places too. I, I kind of found different opportunities and things that I didn't know I could do or would do or had to do, you know? So, I mean, I like from writing, I, I, I uh, wrote a children's book about my birds. <laughs> kind of oh, fun. cool. It's got the plastic on it. Sorry. But, no, uh, it's, I love it's it. Bear, but, but, you know, like you don't know, I've done, you know, some, I've hosted some television <laughs> things and some radio stuff. It, but I think like, but that's change and that's good. You yeah. know, I, so I'm pushing myself too, but I, 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 uh, it is a little nerve wracking, you know, it to is. come out to Los Angeles too, to, to pursue the dream further was really nerve wracking too. I, you know, here it is. Oh my God, LA, little Laura from Mount Airy, Maryland. And, you know, you have all these beautiful people and all these things. And I remember sitting in bed with my parents and my mom saying to me, she's like, Laura, you know, when you go out to Los Angeles, she's like, be you. She's like, don't let that, don't let LA change you and make you into something else. Right. She's like, there's always going to be somebody prettier. There's always going to be someone fatter, thinner, wealthy, da, 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 whatever it may be, you know? And she's like, you go there and you keep that smile and, and, and you take on the challenge. And so that's what I did. And it's been really, it's been great. It's been, it has been challenging. I've learned a lot about myself and things that I didn't know I could do. Um, but I, it really is all about learning and, and, and going, going through the change, you know, um, no, I'm not even close to that, but anyway, but you know, dear God, dear God. Um, but yeah, so. Oh, sorry, Brad, uh, this is the kind of show. Anyway, I'm moving no, on. It's all right. It's good. All right. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you this. Uh, so, so when you are, when you are, again, you're putting the song together, uh, hometown heroes, uh, the way that it was, um, sweet revenge. When you are recording these songs, are you in the back of your mind saying, "Oh man, this is a hit. This is awesome." I'm. You're. You're. Do, are you feeling the energy, or is it just you? You put it out there and hope for the best. Um, I like to think I. I, I know, but. <laughs> Um, but I do get excited. I'm like, oh my God, I think this is amazing. But if somebody doesn't, oh my God, what am I going to do? But you know, I mean, you definitely go through a whole roller coaster of things. I mean, you know, it's definitely, oh my God. <laughs> you know, it's definitely all over the place. You definitely go through a, a crazy amount of emotions, especially when it's getting ready to be released. Right. It's when, it's, when you're finishing it and putting on the, it's being mixed. It's being mastered. You're putting on the little guitar licks, and na 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 na. That's the that's amazing. And it's fun, and you're just like, oh, it feels so good. And then when you when they're like, okay, we're gonna release it tomorrow, you're like, oh. I mean, you're like, okay, okay. Do you sleep well the night before? Um, yeah, um, <laughs> um, not exactly. I mean, you got. I, you got to watch some reruns of some friends episodes got to read some like the newspaper and try and go to sleep or something you know <laughs> but uh but no and then the next day you wake up and luckily knock on wood um that we've had some we've we've been really lucky and been really yeah. successful so thank you yeah you're welcome you're bad all right so if you were going to uh, give advice to up and coming entertainers, what would that advice be? Learn, always learn, learn, learn. And again, you never know who the little guy is going to turn out to be. So always, always be kind to people. And you know what? The other thing is, is in the way of the world that it is now, you got to stay on top of your social media because especially during a pandemic, that was the way that we could communicate with our, I don't call them fans. We're called, I call everybody the Bryniacs. Actually, they, actually, I think Sanders um, came up with the name. So uh, he has coined the phrase of we are the Bryniacs. And so, you know, that's a way to keep in touch with your family. I don't call them fans. So, um, you know, that's really key too, is to really stay on top of your social media and, and really connect with people. It's about connecting. It is. And 
thank God for shows like yours who allow us to stay connected to our family during times like this, but, but in general too. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd say. Learn, uh, sleep at another time, always be up for meeting people and uh, stay on top of your social media so you can stay connected to everyone. I love it. That's good advice. Great advice. Thank you so much. And always keep the crazy and don't let anybody change you. No, I love that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So if somebody wanted to find out more about you, if they wanted to uh, reach out to you, uh, book a gig with you, what website do they go to? They can go to www. Oh, wait, www. <laughs> LauraBrina.com, L-A-U-R-A-B-R-Y-N-A.com. And we got our Twitter, we got our Facebook, or the Insta tweet, if you want. Yeah, the Insta um, tweet. And we got our TikTok. So, yes, join us. Come and see the crazy Laura Brina, the crazy adventures we're on and uh, during pandemics, or not pandemics, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can go to Laura's website and become a, uh, how did you say Brainiac. it? Brainiac? Brainiac. 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 Yes. Join us. I love it. I love it. Laura, it's been such a blast having you here. And I look forward to catching up with you again. Thank you. Me too. Thanks, Bert. This is so fun.